Because architecture really did used to be simple. Even before you had a monolith and a SQL database, you had the mainframe where you had to go and present your offering to the ops and hope that they would take pity on you and actually run your job for you. And architecture at that time was very simple. You didn't have to worry about many of the problems that we have to worry about today. And in fact, many of our approaches to architecture have still been grounded in this idea that systems are simple. As, as he noted, that we could live in this fantasy world of consistency, that we had control over the world, we had control over our data. Uh, but that world simply doesn't exist anymore. And it's not just that our architectures have changed. The technology stack is so much more complicated. We have so many more possibilities. But other things have changed as well. Our users now expect things that they never expected before. Everything used to be batch. You never had to worry about this real-time stuff. You never had to worry about response times as long as you ran in a batch window, which could be several hours. And the expectations change much more rapidly. How many people would be willing to deal with a green screen where you were really excited if when you hit tab it actually went to the right place? We would never accept such things anymore. But that is our reality now. And so our conception of architecture has to change as well to accommodate this new reality. And that's where we start talking about evolutionary architecture. And I could spend the next 16 minutes that I have defining evolutionary architecture, uh, but I'd rather talk about how we got here.